Hi there, Steve here with a quick guide to using the MZ Snake tool. All you'll need to get started is a snake mesh and a path for the snake to move along. I've created a path in my scene using the CV Curve tool. Now once you've got your snake mesh in your scene, you'll need to position the mesh so it's along the X axis and facing in the positive X direction. And position the base of the snake's head so it's roughly at the origin. Then in the Snake Tool User Interface, type in a name for your snake. Make sure the snake mesh is selected and then click on the Select Mesh button and then click on the Create Rig button. This creates a skeleton along the length of the snake with the first joint positioned at the origin and it's also created a few control handles. You can then click on the Attach Rig button. This will bind the skeleton to the mesh as well as adjusting the skin weights of the mesh vertices. And you can see at the bottom of the user interface there is a progress bar to keep you updated. Now the snake is fully rigged and ready to animate so let's select our path then click on the select path button and then click on the attach snake to path button. You can see that our snake mesh has been duplicated, so I'll hide our original mesh by turning off the snake mesh origin layer. Then if we can click on the play button, we can see that our rigged snake is animated and following our path. But at the moment, the snake has no side to side movement, so we click on the create animation button to create this side movement. I'll turn off the joint layer in the control layer so now we can see our fully animated snake mesh moving along our path. So now we have a full snake animation using all the default settings. But to add more detail to the animation we can now go through all the custom settings. So I'll turn the joints layer in the controls layer back on. Then I'll click on the D button next to the create animation button which deletes all the keyframes for the snake's side to side movement. Then I'll click on the D button next to the attach snake to path button. This detaches the snake from the path and positions it back along the X axis. Now let's open the rig settings. And in the outliner window, let's have a look at what's inside our snake one group. We've got our snake mesh, which is the duplicate of our original snake mesh. The snake one skeleton group, which has our 30 joints, matching up to the number of joints in our rig settings. The snake one do not touch group has an IK spline handle and control curves, which we don't need to worry about. The snake one controls group has our 15 controls, which matches up with the number of controls in the rig settings. These controls are used to keyframe the side to side movement of the snake and I'll talk about these more later. The next setting is the number of handles which at the moment is set to 2. And we can see that the snake has 3 handles. The first handle is used to control the snake's head position and rotation. This control is always created by the snake tool. So if the number of handles is set to zero, this control handle will still be created but not the other two control handles. At the moment the number of handles is set to two. So we have the head control handle plus another two handles. And these other two handles are used to control the position of the snake's body next to the head. If we increase the number of handles in the rig settings, then more handles will be created starting from the snake's head and working back towards the tail. So let's have a look at how this works. First, I'll delete the current snake rig by selecting the snake one group in the outliner window and pressing the delete button on the keyboard. Then select the original snake mesh, click on the select mesh button. Now I'll set the number of joints to 10, number of controls to 10 and number of handles to 7 then click on the Create Rig button. Now we can see that we've got 10 joints, 10 controls, the head control handle and 7 more handles along the length of the snake. 
The next setting to look at is the joint length. By default, the snake tool will automatically calculate the joint length so that the length of the skeleton matches the length of the snake mesh. If you want to change this, you can click on the joint length button to enable the setting, then type in a custom joint length. Then below the joint length setting is the snake length, which shows how long the snake mesh is. This is always disabled and is only displayed for your information. So for now, I'll turn off the joint length setting, reset the number of joints to 30, number of controls to 15, and number of handles to 2. Delete the snake rig by selecting the snake one group in the outliner window and press the delete button. Select the original snake mesh. Select mesh button. Create rig. Attach rig. Wait for the script to finish attaching the rig. Select the snake path and click on attach snake to path and then create animation. Close the rig settings. Now let's have a look at the animation settings. Start frame and end frame control how fast the snake moves along the path. I'll set the end frame to 2000. Now if I go to zero on the timeline we can see that the snake is positioned at the start of the path and if I go to 2000 on the timeline the snake is at the end of the path. So now if I change the end frame from 2000 back to 500 and press the play button, you can see the snake moves quite fast along the path. But the side to side movement doesn't match the snake speed. This is because the side to side movement keyframes haven't been updated after changing the end frame. So we need to click on the create animation button to create new side movement keyframes to match the snake's new speed. And now that looks better. Now you might have noticed when I changed the end frame that the average speed setting also changed. And if I change the average speed setting, then you can see that the end frame automatically changes. So changing the speed affects the end frame setting and changing the start frame or end frame automatically changes the speed setting. The next setting is wavelength, which controls how many waves appear in the snake side to side movement. So if I set it to 1 and click on Create Animation, you can see there's fewer waves in the snake's side-to-side -side movement. If I set this to 8, now there are more waves. But when I play the animation, it's a bit of a mess, and that's because there aren't enough joints and controls to handle the extra waves. So to fix this, we would need to start again by creating a new rig with more joints and more controls. So for now, I'll set this back to 4. And we'll have a look at the wave amplitude setting, which controls how much side to side movement occurs. If I set this to 0 0.5, there's less side to side movement. And if I set this to 2, there's more side to side movement. Next is wave rate. This controls how fast the side to side movement occurs. For most snake animation, you'll want to keep this at around 1, but let's say you're animating a snake swimming through water, you could set this to 1.8. And now when we play the animation, you can see that the side to side movement is a bit faster than before. So the wavelength, wave amplitude and wave rate can all be keyed. So for example, let's set the end frame back to 2000. Create a wavelength keyframe at frame 600, set to 4. And wave amplitude keyframe of 1. Then at frame 650, set the wavelength to 2. And the wave amplitude to 0.5. I'll set the wave rate back to 1 and then create animation. Play the animation and you can see the changes in the snake's side to side movement as it moves from frame 600 to frame 650. Now if we want to keyframe the speed of the snake, that's what the path U value is for. The path U value indicates how far the snake is along the path. 
A value of 0 means the snake is at the start of the path, and a value of 1 means the snake is at the end of the path. So to see how this works, I'll remove the wavelength and wave amplitude keyframes, and then set the wavelength back to 4 and the wave amplitude back to 1. The end frame is set to 2000, so if we go to 2000 on the timeline, we see the snake is at the end of the path, and the path U value is 1. And the start frame is set to 0, so if we go to 0 on the timeline, we can see that the snake has moved along the path roughly the length of the snake, and the path value is 0 0.181. If we change this to 0, now the snake's head is back at the start of the path. Now let's get the snake to stop moving at frame 800. So I'll create a keyframe at frame 800 by setting the path U value to 0 0.5. And then create another keyframe at frame 1000 by again setting the path U value to 0 0.5. I'll select the snake one group in the outliner window and open up the graph editor. And we can see that the snake moves along stops at frame 800, then starts to move again at frame 1000. Click on Create Animation, and then Play. And we can see the snake moving along, stop at frame 800, and then start moving again. So now the last group of settings to look at is in the Add Keyframes section. The script creates keyframes for all the snake's side-to-side -side movement, and by default it creates a minimum number of keys. So you'll find that there are occasions when you want to add in keyframes to get a better result. To show you an example of this, I'll change the path U value at frame 1000. So now instead of stopping, the snake slows down at frame 800, keeps moving and then speeds up again at frame 1000. Click on Create Animation. And now when we play back the animation, you can see the snake slow down but the side-to-side -side movement keeps going when it shouldn't. So to fix this, I'll set the apply from frame to 800, the two frame to 1000, leave the precision at 1, and click on add keyframes. Now when I play back the animation, it looks much better. So let's see what's going on here. In the outliner window, open up the snake one group, and then the snake one controls group. I'll turn off the snake meshed layer, so now when I select these controls, you can see each control's position along the path. And when I play the animation, you can see the controls moving along the path. This is because the snake tool script has created an expression to control the movement of these controls along the path. Now if I open up each control, we can see that there is a joint that is parented to the control. When you click on the Create Animation button, the script creates keyframes for these joints to animate the side-to-side -side movement. If I open up the Graph Editor and click on Control J and 7, then we can see the keyframes and we can see where the snake slows down between frame 800 and 1000. The precision setting affects how many extra keyframes are added. A lower value means more keyframes, a higher value means less keyframes. Let's type in a value of 5 and see what happens. I'll delete the existing keyframes, create animation, then click on add keyframes. Now we see the extra keyframes added in. And lastly, the always active selection box. When this is selected, every time you click on create animation, there will be extra keyframes added according to the precision setting. So let's select Always Active, try a precision value of 1, and create animation. And now you can see that extra keyframes have been added along the entire animation, mainly between frame 800 and 1000. So that completes the run-through of the MZ Snake Tool script. I hope you enjoy using it.